there's not really any new enforcement program for the folks that cause the problems, the non-bank industry, mortgage brokers and others. So it doesn't do what it pretends to do, but it does double down on new regulation on the industry that already has it, the banking industry. That was the vice president of the American Bankers Association making a case that it's not banks that need more regulation, but industries that help get us into the subprime crisis. Well, let's find out. Analysts and government officials talk about the derivatives market as a shadow banking system, but there may be one that's even more important, and it doesn't operate really in the shadows except for those that are not already members. Yes, we're talking about credit unions. They thought by many to be more consumer-friendly banking system. Dan Micah is the president and CEO of Credit Unions. Union National Association. He's also formerly a Democratic congressman from Florida. Today he joins us from Boston, where he's celebrating the 100th anniversary of the first credit union. Dan, that's appropriate. Happy birthday. Glad to have you with yeah, us. Thank you. Great to be here. And this Northeast is where credit unions first entered the United States. So we're glad to have a great birthday. 100 years. All right. Well, tell us exactly what is a credit union? How does something become a credit union and what are the advantages? Well, first and foremost, simple explanation. The difference between a credit union and a bank is two and three. In a credit union, there are two. You and your credit union. In a bank, there are three. You, the bank, and shareholders. Credit unions are not-for-profit financial institutions. You give a credit union a dollar, they do their business, there's 10 cents left over, their job is to get it back to you, not off to shareholders. Same dollar to the bank, you give a bank a dollar, there's 10 cents left over, their job is to try to get it to shareholders. Both are important in our system and our society, but the incentives are totally different. In fact, coincidentally, here on our 100th anniversary op-ed in the New York Times today talks about how the cooperative credit union model really makes things work on a very efficient basis. Now, when you talk about credit unions, it sounds as if they're almost like old mutual societies. Would that be a good analogy? Well, similar, but uh, not exactly. Credit unions are uh, uh, another simple way to put it together is five people get together, each put twenty bucks in. There's a hundred dollars. They lend it to one of the one of their group of five. He or she pays it back with a hundred and ten dollars. They built a little capital. They keep doing it over and over again. But the minute you join a credit union, and it costs today in America anywhere from five to fifteen dollars, you become an owner. Different incentive structure than banks. All right. Now, what about the federal government's role in credit unions? You get a charter, correct? And then what does the federal government have to do with credit unions? Well, first, there are several types of charters. There's a state charter and a federal charter. But the federal government, and this is the other good news, they're safe institutions even since the Depression in the 30s. Uh, no one's lost money in a credit union. Credit unions are insured by the federal government in a similar way that banks are insured by FDIC. They have their own insurance fund, and it's $250,000 per account. So the government is involved. There's heavy regulation. In fact, we talk about, you're talking about regulations all day today. Credit unions have more regulations per se than almost any other financial institutions in America. And that's not me saying it. That was a study by the federal government. Now, Dan, Michael, what about the credit unions and the health of these institutions? Have any big credit unions been hurt by the recent financial debacle? Have any closed down or have been gone bust? Well, two, two uh, points. One, I guess there are about 40 banks that have uh, been taken over by the government. In the past year, there have been four credit unions, and they've been reasonably handled, so no one's lost any money. We did have two large corporate credit unions that had some difficulties, but again, we would say that was collateral damage. It was looked into by the Congress, it was looked into by the regulator, and all of their investment portfolio, when they entered it, was triple A. But what happened is when Fannie and Freddie went down, when, Wall, when uh, Wall Street had its problems, Lehman Brothers went down, it impacted their portfolios. Now, those were corporate, not everyday consumer credit unions, and they've been dealt with within the system. Now, what about these corporate credit unions? What, what is the difference between a corporate credit union and a consumer credit union? Consumer credit union. You or I or anyone 
can walk in, put money in, make deposits, withdrawals, loans, auto loans, car, uh, uh, mortgages, etc., just like any uh, financial institution. Corporate credit union is where other credit unions park their money overnight. You or I have no access to that. That too, they too are regulated by the federal government. And we're looking at how many of those 28 should be restructured and what form they should take. But credit unions for a hundred years now have always been a flight to safety in difficult times. And in fact, right now with the situation the way it is around the country, uh, we're seeing a flood of growth in membership. People coming in, they want good, solid, safe, conservative investments. All right. I want to thank you very much, Dan Micah. He is the chief executive of the Credit Union National Association, uh, coming to us from Boston on the 100th anniversary of the founding of the first American Credit Union.